four, three, you know the rest. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to Studio Live today and our coverage of the Apple announcement. So there was an Apple event that happened just a few hours ago, if you're watching here live, and some new things were announced, including the iPhone 12 new lineup, the HomePod mini, and the new MagSafe connections for iPhone 12. So was it underwhelming, overwhelming? Well, we're going to find out in this video here in just a few moments. So we're going to cut this into a few sections. I'm going to give you my five minute turbo update. So if you're just here to find out what went on and what you need to know, you can do that. We'll then deep dive into what is actually new. And then we've got your Q and A's and any of your opinions or questions. And I'll share with you my opinions on uh, what has been announced. But let's dive straight on in to what has happened. So uh, we have some new iPhone 12s. Not surprisingly, we have uh, four new ones uh, starting at $699. We've got the iPhone 12 mini. Yes, they did go with the mini naming convention. We've got the iPhone 12, the iPhone 12 Pro, and the iPhone 12 Pro Max. We'll talk about all the differences and features in just a moment. All of these have 5G support. That's the big news out of the uh, announcement here. We've got some new colors, of course we do. We've got a new blue that everyone's excited about and a new gold for the Pro version. All of them are rocking the A14 Bionic chip, which I'm uh, happy about because that is Apple's fastest and best chip. That's going to help creators create more things more quickly. A bunch of camera improvements and screen enhancements and improvements, and it's thinner, lighter, and smaller. Release dates, well, you can pre-order on the 15th, which is tomorrow, my time here, and it'll be available on the 23rd. That's for the iPhone 12 and the Pro. If you're after the iPhone mini or the Pro Max, so the smallest and the largest ones, well, they're not available until November. Pre-orders on the 6th of November, available on the 13th of November. The other little things that were thrown in there, MagSafe, so this is Apple's new charging standard, which you can say, is a, a new revolutionary char way to charge, or you could say it's a new revolutionary way for Apple to generate more revenue from people buying accessories for their iPhone 12. We'll talk about what my view on that is in a little while. And then we've got the HomePod Mini. So this is Apple's answer to the Google Play, uh, not Play, the Google Home Mini, uh, your Amazon, <clears throat> you know the name, I won't say it in case anyone has one lying around like I do. Uh, so this is your smart speaker market, $99 for the for the Home Pod Mini, uh, yeah, it has some things. It sounds like it's been created for music and for music for music listening, and it does some interesting things like uh, automated dynamic range compensation. And I'm like, whoa, okay. If it does actually does that well, that may actually be worthwhile. So that is that is the crux. That's your five minute overview of all of the things that have changed here in the high speed announcement that was just uh, just completed. Uh, let's uh, let's take a quick look. Look um, at this photo here. This gives you the current lineup because let's be honest, it was basically the iPhone 12 event. So the current lineup, oh, it just did a weird flashy thing. Current lineup is that you've got your iPhone SE from $399. They're continuing with the 10R or the XR, which is a very strange decision that that's still part of their active lineup, but go figure, if that's in there at $499, you then got your iPhone 11 from $599, your iPhone 12 from $699, and your iPhone 12 Pro from $999. So they are your costings if you're looking to get yourself into the world of iPhone 12. Exciting. Yeah, I think, as, as I said, enhancement and improvement is the order of the day. There is really nothing new apart from 5G. 5G is new, and uh, the 5G included is the millimeter band for those in the US, uh, as well as the more conventional 5G for those of us in the rest of the world. So wherever you are in the world, you'll be able to get hold of uh, an, a 5G iPhone. It's finally here. It's my cord goes over my shoulder. This cord on these headphones is too short or it needs to stretch out. All righty, let's, uh, let's continue on here and we'll jump into some deep dives of what was actually talked about. So first of all, uh, here is, whoop, we'll bring it up over here. Here is the iPhone 12. And yes, I'm just going to jump over here to apple.com. You can do the same if you want to go to apple.com. You can uh, check out all of the details and uh, and do the, the funkiness here. So if you, if you scroll on down, uh, you'll get uh, a view of the iPhone 12. And there's the new colors here. I buried the lead there, but there's those new colors that we talked about. We got the blue. We got the red. Of course, I'd have to get product red if I bought one because it goes faster. We know that. You got the green and you got, I think they're calling it graphite 
now. <laughs> and I think someone in the pre-show uh, just said, uh, yeah, they've gone back to the iPhone 5 design. Like every couple of years they have to go back. So yeah, we, we kind of from the iPhone 5 through the 6, 7, 8 and 10, we kind of went more bubbly, more smooth, more rounded. And now they're like, boom, bring it on back. Bring it on back to the, uh, to the nice sharp edges. So yeah, this looks more like an iPhone 5 than any iPhone has for a while. We'll dive into uh, dive into the features in a moment, but I haven't said good day to the folks who are here live. If you are here live and you have any questions, please drop them down, put question in front of them, and we will get to some uh, we'll get to some feedback at the end as well. Uh, so Melissa, thank you, thank you for here. Yeah, here it was. It was Michael that said every every so years they go back to the iPhone 5 design. They sure do. Hello to Alex, hello to SM Both. We've got Tom Rochelle here in the house. Hello to Scott. Uh, hello to Bubba. We've got to Lutch Vegas is here, our buddy Michael. Mark is here. Jack Smith, uh, who have I missed here? Sion is here. Hello to you, Solrak M7. Uh, Stu Cash in the house and Langston Reese as well. If you are here and you want to say good day, say good day. And Sion, I agree. It's an incremental upgrade. There's nothing uh, revolutionary, nothing brand, brand spanking in this stuff apart from 5G and a few little twiddly bits as we go through. So what I'll do is I'll bring up, uh, hello to you fallen, I'll bring up uh, my notes here, make sure I talk about everything that I thought was interesting from the event. And as I talk, we'll scroll through Apple's offering over here and make sure that we uh, cover anything that they've got there. So what is new in the iPhone 12? So uh, as we mentioned before, the iPhone 12 is from $699 for, $699 for the iPhone 12 mini and for the regular version, it's $799. That's for a 64 gigabyte model, which is okay, but I would generally always go for a 128 gigabyte model if you are getting a new iPhone. I, don't, I think 64, with, if you're a creator and you're creating video and audio, you're going to very quickly run out of space. And if you're shelling out the $799, you might as well spend, I think it's $949 uh, to get that. But again, it all, <laughs> all comes down to your budget, uh, which we'll talk about in a moment. So what do we have on this, uh, this beautiful new iPhone 12? Well, yes, we have blast past fast uh, so it's uh, it's faster it's got the a14 bionic chip and edge-to-edge -edge oled display so no more lcd displays all of these are the new oled and it's in two perfect sizes let's talk about those sizes shall we uh, does it have a does it have anything here yes yeah, so there, there's its little uh, its vanity metrics 11 percent thinner 15% smaller and 16% lighter. So in terms of that, we've got a 6.1 inch display, which is the same as the iPhone 11, but it is smaller than the iPhone 11. So because they're going closer to the edge, we have a smaller display. And yes, we still do have the notch. They didn't get rid of the notch. <sighs> I know. If you're wondering, it's, the, uh, <clears throat> it's what they call the Super Retina XDR display, and it's a custom OLED display. So every, every little pixel, <laughs> big news and mini news, every little pixel is its own little light, and they're saying that that's going to give you the ultimate dark darks and bright brights. Uh, yeah, but that's the, that's the Apple speech for it anyway. So there's your two sizes of the XDR display. So you've got your 6.1 on the left and your mini is 5.4 inches. A mini phone is 5.4 inches. Keep in mind, 4.7 inches was like the the old the iPhone SE and the iPhone 8 sizing, and a mini version is now 5.4 inches. Go figure, hey. Uh, if you're wondering on the the uh, ratio, so the pixels on that one, so the screen is 460 pixels per inch. It's 2352 by 1170. Yes, Apple making up different uh, screen resolution sizes once again. Thanks, Apple. That really makes it easy for us when we're creating and doing tutorials when we've got these weird and wackies. And it's pretty funny that it's yeah the world's smallest, thinnest, lightest 5G phone because it really does look exactly like an iPhone 5, just with this stupid notch in the top <laughs> and the edge-to-edge -edge screen. But yeah, how much like the iPhone 5 and 5S does that one actually look when you see it there in the hand, especially the mini version? Uh, so yeah, it's tougher glass. They've done some four, four times better drop performance for all you rebels who live on the edge and don't put covers on your phones. Uh, aerospace grade, you, you've read, all, you've seen all this before. Uh, H2 okay, yeah, you can spill and splash resistant. So don't don't go dunking your iPhone 12. The Pro model does have some better uh, depth depth resistance, but yeah, you don't want to do that. And then you've got your finishes. It's going to go blue, green, red, red, white, and 
Now, I think they're calling this graphite now. It used to be space gray. One of them is graphite and uh, there's new. So uh, 5G. So yes, 5G speeds. If you want to risk it, I know 5G causes all sorts of things. But uh, yeah, if you're willing to risk the 5G, ooh, you can put your tinfoil hat on and rock some 5G. And uh, yeah, the A14M Bionic. So it's in all of them, even the, uh, the regular ones and the Pro models. The same chip as the iPhone 12 Pro. So you might be thinking, oh, okay, so what's the difference? Why would I buy a Pro? Uh, we'll check that out in just a moment. If you're just joining us, this is our deep dive. If you jump to the start of this video, uh, I do my five-minute overview. So if you just want to say, Pete, what's new? Jump back to the start of the video and you'll get our overview. But this is our deep dive into the world of iPhone 12. Yes, we've got uh, a better OLED display, as you can see there. And it is our best iPhone ever. There's the dual camera. And the, the thing that I liked about the, the new cameras that we have here is that they all have dark mode. So dark mode sort of came out in the Pro 11 Pro. Uh, all of the different cameras have dark mode, which means they're going to get better results in low light, which for creators is a good thing because if you've been shooting video, even you would have even seen some of my video that I shoot in lower light settings on my iPhone 10s. this sucker here, it doesn't have really great performance in low light. So that's actually a factor. I'll talk about what factors I am actually considering and why I would actually upgrade. And the camera is definitely one of them because I use my iPhone as one of my primary cameras these days. The cameras in them are pretty darn good. There you go. You got your you got your night modes. You can take all sorts of stunning looking pictures like this uh, and this and people jumping off. Pictures of sushi are always important. Steve Jobs always liked sushi in his announcements. He'd always talk about whenever he was doing a map related thing, he would always talk about going for sushi. Uh, we got portrait mode. Uh, we've got a bunch of other things. I don't think there's much else here. Oh, MagSafe. We'll get into MagSafe in a minute, shall we? Let me just check my notes. Oh, beautifully stackable MagSafe. Leave, let's leave it on there. Ah, click. <laughs> Everything just clicks together. Uh, so, uh, what was that? Yeah, so we'll go through this. Super HD Retina, A14 Bionic, dual camera. You've got your wide and your ultra wide, the new lens with the better low light performance, night mode on the photos and videos, and on your front facing camera too. And it comes bundled with a USB-C to lightning cable. I'll just pause on that for a moment. Doesn't have a charger. Doesn't even have a regular USB. USB-C to lightning. So it is assuming that you either have a Mac with USB-C, uh, already have a USB-C charging thing, which is weird because if you're upgrading, say, from the iPhone 11 or iPhone 10, which is probably likely, or even iPhone 8, you've probably got your whole infrastructure set up around having lightning to USB. So you've got your USB, USB AC adapter, and you're like, grab this out of the box. And you know what? Some people may not have a USB C power port to plug it into. So what do you do? <laughs> How do you charge it? You buy the MagSafe accessories. Yes, that is a, that is a segue into the MagSafe, which is these little suckers here, which are chargers, they're cases, there's these little dicky wallets that you can stick to the back of your phone. Yeah, I'm really a little bit baffled by this stuff. So <laughs> the wallet, which looks like it fits like two credit cards, Maybe is that how people roll these days? You only need your what your license and your and your credit card when you when you're out and about, and you don't want to put a regular case on. You just want to stick this little thing to the back. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> you put your Apple credit card in there. But why would you do that? You can just use Apple Pay. So yes, and they're, they're stackable, which means they've got these really strong magnets, meaning you could stack it up so you could put a case on, and then a wallet, and then a little charger dearly, and then you can uh, keep yourself uh, looking really cool. <laughs> <laughs> Turbo chargeable, yes. Magnets align themselves perfectly. Fast wireless charging. So the, the wireless charging is up to 15 watt. It is compatible with the current Qi standard, the QI standard. So you don't actually have to go out and buy a whole bunch of new gear. Apple would love you to. They would love you to, to stock up on a bunch of uh, MagSafe accessories. And if MagSafe sounds um, familiar, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong if you're here in, live in the chat, I believe it's what Apple called their the, the charger connections on their MacBooks, those ones that actually just went thunk and popped on the side. I think, aren't they called MagSafe? Or am I making that up? I could be making that up. There's the range of all the things that you can stick to the back of your phones. I think they look ugly. I think they're unnecessary. But you may love it and think that it's the coolest thing ever. And it's the main thing about this launch. But... Not so much for me. iOS 14, we don't need to talk about. You know about iOS 14. It is, uh, it is a thing and a place. Let's look at pricing. So here we go. Now, one thing that's interesting, 
is that there's a whole bunch of different uh, carriers. So if we're here in, in the States, well, I'm not in the States, but if you are, AT&T, Sprint, T-Mobile, Verizon, there's special offers, there's trading offers, there's monthly payment offers. Apple have really stepped up in terms of financing because I think they're realizing <laughs> that not many people at the moment have the 729 to lay out at minimum of 729. And I'm not sure why it's 729 and not 699. When I've gone in here to price them, they're all $30 more expensive. Is that a $30, uh, $30 pandemic tax? I don't know. Uh, but they're all slightly more expensive. So, yeah, you can get a monthly one. You can have them non-activated, which is what I would choose to do. I'm not here to tell you how to run your finances, but be careful of monthly payments. Be careful of uh, bundling things. You do end up paying significantly more by bundling most of the time than by actually just buying things outright and then choosing your plan. You'll usually get a much better plan with much better inclusions and you'll get the phone paid for outright without monthly payments. But again, if you, yeah, for, for those folks who can't afford to spend seven, $800, because who can? Hands up who's got $1,000 just laying around gathering dust? Not me. So uh, yeah, that is an option there. So we can come in here, we can choose our color. We'd go red, of course, because it goes faster. Uh, you can choose the mini, and as I mentioned, if you missed the start, you can pre-order the Mini from the 11th. Hang on, I've got to do this reverse thing. 6th of November. I've got to reverse the dates around in my head. Or the 16th for the regular iPhone. So you can order that one and it'll come on the 23rd of October. So you've only got a bit over a week to wait if you want to jump in and pre-order. We'd order a red one. We'd go carrierless. And then here you go. So 64 gig, 128 or 256. So the two this is about where I'd land at the moment if I got the 12, a 256. I don't want any of that. So yeah, there's your thousand. There's your thousand dollar bucks. And that's, uh, that's Yankee dollar bucks. I would imagine doing the quick uh, Australia tax conversion that's going to be about a $1,600 phone. And that's not the Pro. I know. Scary, right? So that is the iPhone 12. That is the uh, that is the accessories, the MagSafe, the egg, everything else. <laughs> We've got uh, a few folks talking about that one. Agree, they are ugly on the back. Um, and uh, Tom Rochelle thinks uh, I'm correct about the MagSafe. My 2011 MacBook Pro has the magnetic charger. Yeah, and there was a really cool word that they, um, that they used. In, in the announcement, what was it? It was magna, magnomet, mag, magnetometer. And I'm like, magnetometer. I'm going to write a song like a, I reckon Tom, Tom Rochelle, Thomas Christ should do a really cool song like a do, 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 magnetometer. <laughs> Just a word I'd never heard before. Magnetometer for the win. So there's your iPhone 12 and iPhone 12 mini. Why don't we take a look? Let's take a walk on the pro side, shall we? Let's you and I jump over to the pro side. If you're getting some value out of this, if you would rather watch me make fun of these than have to sit through the entire hour-long Apple presentation, give me a thumbs up, give me a like. I would appreciate it. But let's jump in here to the iPhone 12 Pro. It's a leap year. <clears throat> there you go. First thing you can see is that we've still got that ridiculous looking uh, array on the back of the three cameras. I just don't like it. It's uneven. I, I, when you've got that rat, that sort of square bit there, and then I know you've got to have your LiDAR sensor and your light, but can't you just switch that one? Make it at least symmetrical. Is anyone else really bugged by that? I think it will be the thing that stops me buying it. At least the iPhone 12 uh, has the two. Oh, it doesn't, not showing there. At least the iPhone 12 has the two, and it's kind of symmetrical looking. When you go to the iPhone, anyway, maybe that's just me. So let me know if, if you don't like the ugliness of those uh, those three three eyes in there. I must be. I think it's a number three thing that I don't really like. So yeah, we've got the 5G. We've got the A14 Bionic. Uh, rockets past everything. All of the same stuff now. Uh, again, the Max version, the slightly bigger one, is not available till November. So keep that in mind. If you want the big one, you're going to have to wait an extra month. The small one is coming out. And that's really just due to production runs. And so uh, Apple wanted to get these out in October, but they couldn't get all four models out. So they split it up. And the two regular sized ones, the uh, 12 and the 12 Pro, uh, will be out. But then the 12 Pro Max and the 12 Mini are out next month. Less bezel, more screen. Yes, I know. Everyone hates bezels. I'm I'm a huge bezel fan. I would much prefer to have a bigger phone without this ridiculous notch at the top, but uh, I'm wrong. So there you go. <laughs> uh, there you go. We've got 6.1 inch Super Retina display on the Pro. The Pro Max has the 6.7 inch Super Retina display. And if you're wondering how they compare to the previous models, 
So the previous Pro, the 11, was 5.8 inches, and the previous Pro 11 Pro Max, uh, yeah, 11 Pro Max was 6.5 inches. So they've given you, and I love it, they were like, with a huge increase of 0.3 inches on the Pro and 0.2 inches on the Pro Max. Hey, it's more, it's bigger, but it's the same real estate. So they're getting things closer to the edge. Don't push me because I'm close to the edge. You know it. Uh, right, kicks glass. Yeah, kick glass. Look at that iPhone 5 look. <laughs> even got the little even got the little sidey bits there. I wish I had my iPhone 5 here to show you how similar that actually is. Uh, actually, when I say my iPhone 5, it's my daughter's iPhone 5 now. She she owns that. So, yep, there we go. Surgical grade. Are they surgical grade stainless steel? And what did they say? Precision machine glass. Now, this is the one we talked about the splash resistance that we had on the uh, on the iPhone uh, 12. This one has the dunking up to six meters for 30 minutes. So if, you, if you're if you in a habit of hanging out six meters underwater for 30 meters and you really want to make sure you catch up on the latest TikToks, then you can get the iPhone 12 Pro. And uh, oh yeah, I, did, I almost skipped over the really important feature. Man, they, they spent about two minutes just talking about this gold and how it shimmers and how it reflects the light and how it's so revolutionary. I don't really get it uh so there there is the the four finishes and then yes super fast wireless 5g i'm just going to switch on back to this view just for a moment because uh i'm getting some <laughs> i'm getting some uh some performance problems running the apple site uh in the background so i'm just going to close down anything that we have here uh i think uh, pete should be buying himself a new computer as opposed to uh, any of these new devices just quietly but uh, we'll pop it back up on here now if it's going to work for us. There we go. Uh, so, yes, we've got uh, 5G. The good thing about the 5G is that it is going to be kind of nice in that it won't actually use 5G when you're low battery or when it doesn't need it. So it's, it's smart enough to switch between 5G and 4G mode to save on battery. Otherwise, it would just be toast. You would not get through a day and that would not be cool. Um, so yeah, so that's, that's a good thing. And like I said, it's got the millimeter band for those in the US. Uh, so you can use your 5G anywhere around the world. What else do I have in my list here? I'll flick on down because most of the other things are pretty similar. You've got the A4 14 Bionic on all of those. Uh, it's got all of its, again, it's val vanity metrics of how much faster it is. The, the thing about this is it will be better for creators. If you're using music apps, if you're using video apps, uh, it will actually be a better performance. Similar to, I didn't think it would be a big difference when I upgraded to the iPad Pro, uh, the new iPad Pro 2020. It really is better. So it, when you're running multiple apps, the smoothness, switching between apps, uh, using multiple plugins, using multiple video editing and audio apps at once, it really does run. Having the extra RAM, the extra processing power, and the extra GPU as well. So that's the thing I wanted to say here is that you've got a six-core CPU, uh, and sorry, hexa-core, what they call with the Apple hexa-core, A14 Bionic, and you've also got a four-core GPU, so graphics processing as well as your CPU, your central processor, means that everything's going to go much faster, especially if you get a red one, although they're not available in the Pro. They really haven't catered for me with the pros because they don't have a red one. They only have the uh, they only have the the gold, the gold that shimmers. All that shimmers is gold. Uh, the, uh, the 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 cameras. So yeah, the the Pro Max camera Maximus. So the Pro Max has some additional features on top of that for cameras. I won't go into all of the details because you can jump onto this website again, Apple.com, and find out all the details. Uh, but yeah, the bigger iPhone Max is out the Pro camera system. Forty-seven percent larger sensor. If you know about cameras, the bigger the sensor, the better the image. So the bigger sensor is going to be better. Uh, and new OIS stabilizes the sensor instead of the lens, so your shots are steady even when you're not. So yeah, if you're out in the cold, if you're up there in Canada and uh, the UK where it gets super cold and you're shivering you won't get uh, quite as much shake in your photos um, night mode again is good to have on there and I'm glad that they're really pushing the night mode because people don't have good lighting most of the time including myself so having better lighting is going to be there uh, I don't think there's much else down here that we haven't already talked about 
We talked processors. We talked cameras. We talked the colors. Oh, what about the price? Yes, you want to know prices, right? I'm going to close down some of these windows so that my computer doesn't uh, crap itself. There you go. iPhone 12 Pro is coming. Let's spec out. You know what I love to do here? I like to spec out the most expensive one we possibly can. So you, we're going to go the iPhone 12 Pro Max. Oh, by the way, the, the starting price is $999 for 128 gigabytes on the Pro, $1099 for 128 gigabytes on the Pro Max. So if we go the Pro Max, we wanted in the gold because the gold shimmers so much that uh, yeah, I'm, I'm convinced. Uh, we want no carrier, SIM free, activate with your own carrier. And we're going to go the big boy, the 512 gigabytes. Drum roll, please. Uh, no, I don't have a smartphone to trade, it, trade in. Drum roll, please. Oh, it's a one-time payment of $13.99. So that's going to be a $2,000 plus phone for me here in Australia. And your your currency will vary depending where you are in the world. But yeah, $13.99. Now, of course, if you don't need the 512, you can go down to $256 and you're only down to $11.99. Or uh, the 128 is that $10.99 starting point. And of course, you can go with the smaller smaller 6.1 inch screen so it's so weird that we have the smaller version is 6.1 inches remember what anyone remember the little nokias like the 8210s that had the little tiny screen i reckon they were a two inch screen and phones just seem to get smaller and smaller and smaller because people just wanted these tiny tiny phones and now what do we got we got these uh so yes yeah, so we can go with uh, that one and they're going to start at 9.99 so my this is sort of the version i got of the iphone 10s back in the day and this is yeah 10.99 so if i want to upgrade from my 10s which i probably do that's going to be my price tag and again that's in us bucks for aussie dollar bucks it'll be around 16 1700 i'm sure so yeah i'll just uh you know get under the mattress and and find that no problem Right, let's, uh, what else do we have to cover here? We'll come back to the chat here and see if folks have got any questions. Um, no, no, just put question in front, by the way, if you have any question about this. I'm far from an expert because I've just watched, uh, <laughs> I've just watched the video and uh, I'm just working it all out myself. Uh, so Bubba said that, yes, uh, it's <laughs> a forklift almost took out my MacBook back in 05, quick really saved us from the concrete. So yeah, that's the, uh, that's the good thing there about those magnetic things. And I guess it's the same with your phone. You won't be yanking your cables out. And the very fact that we don't get any other charger cable apart from that lightning to USB-C is a pretty clear indication that they don't want us to be charging with anything but their new stuff. Um, we've got uh, NE1 says I'm in the UK and think uh, I'm looking at getting the 256 gig Pro Max, which will be 1200 quid. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, and Tom says uh, that's not a whole lot more for 512 if you're getting the 12 or max you might as well max out yeah you know what once you're over a thousand dollars for a phone spending one or two hundred dollars more to get more storage space I will always recommend getting more storage space in fact uh, uh, if you are in the market for an iPhone uh, I haven't updated it with the iPhone 12s but it will be updating in the next couple of days but if you want to compare iPhone models I have a handy dandy user guide over at the uh, studio live today.com slash iPhone. And this will be updated in the next couple of days because this is my recommendations back in April when we had the late, the, the newest phones, which was the iPhone SE that came out then. So here are my, uh, my recommended phones back in April. And uh, here's my iPhone comparison chart. So if we uh, click this one, this is my little uh, guide and I'll be updating this again. This is a PDF guide that gives you all the information you need. So at the moment, the bottom, the big, big daddy, big mummy there is the iPhone 12, uh, so iPhone 11 Pro Max, which uh, is 10.99 to 14.49 there. Uh, so that's all the specs of that one. And uh, yeah, that will have the addition of these four new phones to keep me on my toes. So that's studiolivestoday.com slash iPhone if you want to check out my iPhone guide there. Uh, we've got a question uh, here from Solrak. Uh, do any of the iPhone have a camera bump on the back? I'm pretty sure they are all bumpy, Solrak. And uh, for... Uh, uh, any of our other friends here uh, who are vision impaired, it's, uh, I do try to give as much uh, ex auditory explanation as I possibly can uh, to help you know what's going on. So if we grab this one, that's the oh, see, it's not going to show us here. We'll go back to the um, we'll go back to the iPhone. Click on that one. We'll go back to the iPhone view here. iPhone 12 Pro. Uh, yeah, 
so it's it, it is still it's still popping out the back there um we're just showing some uh, photos of these now and going down uh it's not uh, yeah so it's it's hard to see they're not showing any of the angles i think what they want you to do is buy one of the cases so that you don't have but yeah you can see that you do still have those bumps coming out the back uh, of the phone so uh yeah it's, it is going to have that but if you buy one of the if you buy one of the mag safe cases what they will do is uh, have the little cut out there and then everything will be nice and flush so don't worry about the bumps all right just buy a, a 49 dollars mag safe case and uh, you'll be good to go speaking of mag safe that's a good uh, segue to jump into this one. Oh, so another question here from Danny. Is the Pro Max USB-C? Uh, uh, no. So no, none of these are actually USB-C yet. All still Lightning, which I was... Um, I, we thought that would be coming, but I'm a little surprised by that the Pro models. I really thought that we'd go to a USB-C world. If I had the, the Pro Max and then my, uh, my Pro 2020 iPad, it would be nice to have been able to pair both of those up and use the same USB-C setup. As it turns out, what I'll need to do is have a Lightning-based studio setup here for when I'm using a Lightning-based phone and then have my USB-C for when I'm using a USB-C device, my iPad Pro 2020. A bit of a pain in the butt, but there you go. So here you go. Here's what I was talking about. Uh, you've got your i your 12 Pro silicon case with MagSafe, uh, Cypress green. Look at all the different colors there. Of course, you get red because it goes faster. Uh, we've then got the clear case. So if you want to show off your beautiful clearness, and it's got this weird, the clear case has this wacky... Um, sort of circle around there showing you where you should plug in your new MagSafe charger. So if you buy the clear case because you bought a red iPhone because it goes faster, it'll make sure that it's got that nice flush with your, your camera there. And then uh, it has the spot where you put your MagSafe charger. So $49 for your case and then $39 for your MagSafe charger. And let's have a look at this one because uh, this is probably the more interesting thing. There it is. It plugs in and it just has a surface. It's as simple as that. It's a little round disc that's about, what, a couple of inches across. And uh, yeah, everything just clicks. There's also, as we showed before, there's also these little wallet attachments. So you can put, again, the idea is that you put the case on, then you put your wallet around on the back of it, and then you put your little charger dealy on the back of it, and you stack up your three different MagSafe accessories, and then you're, uh, you're good to go, I guess. I guess that's how it works. I don't know. It, it seems so clunky. It seems like Apple go out of their way to do all these things to make it smooth and integrated. And then they give you these random clunky accessories that make it look much worse than it was before. Maybe that's just me. And there's the there's the MagSafe uh, leather wallet, $59. So if you wanted to kit yourself out, you'd pay 50, 60, and 40. That's some pretty easy math to do. So 150. You want to make yourself MagSafe compliant, <laughs> $150 on top of all of your uh, other purchases. Um, question from Sion, uh, I saw here. Uh, would you recommend the iPad Pro 2020 or the iPad Air? Should I keep my current iPad? Yeah, it's a, it's a good question. We haven't actually, because the iPad Air 4th Gen hasn't come out yet. We don't have all of the specs on it. And we do have all the specs on it, but we don't have it uh, real testing in the field. Because it has the A14 processor, it's going to fly along, but it doesn't have the same sort of pro features like the, uh, the pro uh, display and some of the other horsepower under the hood because they wanted to put something out there that was better than the iPad but wasn't quite the pro. I think for most people, most people doing audio and video creators, the iPad Air 4th Gen is actually going to be a really good choice and especially uh, well sorry uh, it is a USB-C so keep that in mind that if you've got a lightning based setup you will need to go USB-C uh, question from Solarac what kind of blue is the iPhone 12 mini I'm getting one iPhone 12 mini and I'm getting one iPhone 12 Pro Max with 512 gigabytes nice so there are two different blues on the iPhone there is the midnight. Oh, I lost my screen. There is the midnight blue, uh, which is on the Pro Max, and then there's just a regular blue. I think they just call it blue, um, but it is. It's a kind of what would you call that blue, folks? It's a sort of muted blue, uh, a lighter blue color that's uh, there. So uh, none of the none of the phones because they're a, a metallic looking finish, a stainless steel. They're not like bright, so we're not talking the brights of the plastics that you get on your cases and things like that. So it's a very subtle, almost sort of gunmetal grey blue that you got on the iPhone 12 and iPhone 12 Mini. Uh, but yeah, it looks quite nice. Uh, I would uh, I would I would either go the red or the blue. 
Um, red's my favourite colour. Blue is my second favourite colour. So there you go. Uh, let's uh, let's bring up the final thing that we want to talk about here, which is our HomePod. So what is the HomePod and what does it do and why should you care? That's all very good questions. If you're not aware, the HomePod has been around for a while, but this is the HomePod Mini. So the HomePod, uh, I talked about this in a recent show. It's uh, similar to your Amazon <coughs> speaker or your Google Home Mini. And uh, yeah, it's $99 and it's going to be available soon. I'll show you the pricing and that sort of thing in a moment. But Apple have been selling their regular HomePods. But the problem is they've only got about 5% market penetration because the HomePod, I think, was three ninety nine. It was really expensive for a smart speaker. It, it, it was good because, as Apple always like to say, they're like, At "Apple, we love music and we want to give you the best music experience." So, uh, it is. It, it was always a better quality speaker, but now they've gone with the the Mini. <clears throat> and uh, let's not bury the lead. Let's show you what it looks like. There it is. It's a little mesh ball with a little light on top. You got your minus and your plus on there. Very similar design. These smart speakers, there's no real way to design them differently. <laughs> so it's a little a little mesh ball with uh, with your volume control on the top. Of course, it uses Siri to uh, to control it, which is the main benefit. And it integrates in with your iPhone or iOS devices. It actually runs the S5 chip, which is, uh, I believe it's the same one in the current um, i I watch, not I watch. What do they call them? Apple Watch. <laughs> so uh, yeah, and you can watch. Uh, you can watch the event there. So they say a room fulling sound, an intelligent assistant, control your smart home, private and secure, all for ninety nine dollar bucks. So the sound is nothing short of amazing. You can hear it now. No, you can't. <laughs> I always love it when you're reviewing speakers or headphones. I've had people in the comments say, why don't you review the sound? Like, because the sound will sound like whatever device you're listening to combined with YouTube's crappy compression. So that's why we don't talk about the actual sound. But it looked like it would sound good. Does that make any sense at all? No, it really doesn't. So uh, jam-packed with innovation, HomePod Mini delivers an unexpectedly big sound for a small speaker, all at just 3.3 inches tall, and it takes up no space but fills the entire room with 360-degree audio that sounds amazing from every angle. We'll be the judge of that because <clears throat> this sucker will probably buy one. <laughs> There's the inside of it that it's showing there now. It says, boundary-pushing computational audio creates full, detailed tones of a much larger speaker, and the HomePod Mini turns it up while without missing your voice commands, which uh, all sounds good if it actually works. <laughs> uh, there's a picture of it again, looking like a big, well, a little mesh ball designed to fit anywhere in the house. Now, comes in two colors, comes in the charcoal-y gray and the, the white, uh, the apple white there. Uh, what, what did I note down here? So yeah, we talked about the S5 chip. It has a full range dynamic driver and I like that computational audio that it talked about. So uh, it says it uses complex tuning models for loudness and dynamic range. Now that's something that I'm reasonably impressed or excited about because if it does that on the fly and does it well, that's a good thing. If it can balance your loudness of your songs and if it can make sure that it delivers good uh, loudness and good volume but maintains dynamic range, hey, I'm in. You know, I'm all about dynamic range. We don't want to crush things here. But what does that mean for us as musicians and music creators, for those of us that create music? Um, do we have to now do anything differently to make sure our stuff sounds good on the HomePod Mini? Well, I'd, I'd wait till we get more than a 5% market penetration before I worry too much about how your music sounds on the Home Mini. Uh, so yeah, the, the other cool thing is if you've got two of them, it can create a stereo, so it automatically detects that. You bring your phone up to it while you're playing stuff and it does some weird haptic feedback thing and you get to have a party in your palm or something like that, I don't know. It, it looks cool. So yeah, there it is. You bring it up and it's like, oh, here's what it is and here's where it's playing and what it's doing, so yeah. It's, it's a perfect complement to your Apple Music listening experience. That's not what they said, but that's what they would say. Uh, and of course, it's all Siri-based. So just ask Siri to do its thing, and it will do its thing. Um, so yeah, <laughs> play the Drake Pandora station. So yeah, you can say, hey, person name, and then it will do all the things. And yeah, it make it, because it integrates it with the Apple Home app as well, you can use it for things like your doorbell and your your, uh, your heating if you have everything hooked up to uh, to the network, which I don't. 
and not many people that I know do have fully smart homes. But if you do, you can do it. Let's look at the pricing, shall we? $99. Pretty simple. I wonder how much these are in Australia. Probably $169. We always pay about that additional 70% on top. So uh, yeah, in fact, can I, can I do this? Can we go? Let's just do a quick Australian. Sorry, this is very selfish of me, but I'm just going to go to uh, apple.com. <laughs> can't even type today. Apple.com.au and we're going to check out the cost here in uh, Aussie dollar bucks. So we'll come in here to... Uh, how do I buy things? Give me some things to buy. Is this the buying button? My bag? Yeah. How do I go to just buy things? We'll just go into iPhone and we'll go to the iPhone. Let's, let's, let's do the same thing. The iPhone 12 Pro. We're going to uh, go to our pricing. We're going to get an iPhone 12 Pro with all the bells and whistles in one of the uh, least strong currencies, Australian dollar bucks. There you go. The Pro Max starts, starts at 1849 Australian. <laughs> With a 6.7 inch screen, we'll get the Pacific Blue this time because that's what I would actually get. And 5.12, yeah, I was, I was, in, I was in the ballpark. Uh, don't have an iPhone to trade in. So 20, where is it? 2,307, no, 2,369 Australian dollars, including GST of $216. Uh, so you can do it, that can get it on interest free as well. 0% interest for 6, 12 or 24 months through Apple. So again, be careful because I think the, the bottom line out of this, and I'll give you my conclusions in a sec. The bottom line out of this is that there's nothing here that is game changing. These are all incremental changes. They are not, re it's evolution, not revolution is the way that I'd say this when we get these sort of updates. So I don't, I don't go on the whole thing of like, oh, it's exciting. Oh, it's not exciting. Apple are great. Apple are terrible. I'm like, Apple are a company and they put products out. And then we look at the products and we say, for my workflow and for what I'm doing and what I need, do I need any of this stuff? Am I going to upgrade? Is it going to be something cool that I want to do in the future? So for me, probably only because my aging iPhone XS, the battery doesn't last very long anymore. The audio is kind of starting to crap out. Uh, and it's, yeah, it, it is on its, not its last legs, but it's it needs to be replaced probably within the next few months. So will I be buying an iPhone 12? Probably because it's the latest iPhone. I was going to buy an iPhone SE, to be honest, because I actually like the form factor of the SE and the SE also has a very good chip. But uh, that is the A12 Bionic. This has the A14 Bionic for someone like me who continues uh, to push their eye devices to the limits. Then, uh, yeah, it's probably something that I'm going to go with. Uh, Flyboy says that I'm bummed they did not go with USB charging or plug-in. Yeah, um, me too. I, I wish that they'd gone USB-C, for, especially for the Pro version. Why? Yeah, why not? Why don't we have that? I don't know. Uh, yeah, so uh, Tom Rochelle says, uh, makes sense. I use the iPad. Oh, we've got folks talking about the iPad. I use iPad solely for music video creating, uh, not so much the iPhone due to the smaller size. Yeah, it is funny because what, what was the uh, iPad mini? Isn't the iPad mini like 7.9 inches? And now we've got an iPhone that is 6.7 inches. But they're really getting... They're really getting closer together, aren't they? Uh, I'm not going to be able to quickly find the specs on this. Uh, where is the uh, where is the size for the iPad Mini? I don't know, but it's it's, it's getting 7.9 inch display. Yeah, <laughs> and there it is. There's the iPad Mini being held in a hand. So we're at the point now where we've got a 7.9 inch iPad Mini and a 6.7 inch iPhone Pro Max. So there is literally 1.2 inches difference between the smallest iPad and the biggest iPhone. Yes, we are through the looking glass here, people. It's a little bit strange, isn't it? <laughs> uh, where was I? Uh, let's come back to the, oh, to the iPhone, iPhone. Oh, I'm in the wrong spot, iPhone. So we'll come back to the iPhone. Um, question, question, wait, there's no charge, There's no charging on this or it's still lightning? Yeah, still lightning. So it didn't really mention that, but yeah, all, all still lightning and uh, they want you to, to use their, uh, their new mobile charging solution. So yeah, so both of the I, iPhone 12 Pro and <laughs> the weird thing is that both of them only come with, uh, in the box, they only come with a lightning to USB-C cable. So you don't get any charger, you don't get any brick to plug into your wall, nothing like that. Yes, uh, and yes, it's still lightning charging with a cord that has lightning on one side and USB-C on the other. So I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm a little baffled by that. 
Uh, <laughs> Top Rochelle says, sounds like my iPhone 7. Uh, Pete, it's held on for a long time, but the battery life is pretty bad and the audio is getting bad too. Yeah, there's something weird that happens to the speakers. I think they get clogged with crud. So I, I just can't use my actual speaker on my iPhone XS anymore. And the same with the... So if I'm using it as a phone, I can't hear properly and people can't hear me. I basically just have to have something plugged in all the time for audio, which I do most of the time. But it's, it's annoying if I just want to play a song and you don't want to go to the effort of setting up. Um, Gordon says, uh, hi Pete, I'm running GB on my iPhone 6S Plus and it's doing okay. Yeah, don't don't uh, don't mock the 6S. I've still got uh, this this one here, the 6S that I uh, am using as a as a workhorse, and I've got a 6S uh, Max Plus, whatever they used to be called, the big one uh, as well. Yeah, these are going to become <laughs> like rare, and uh, because they still run iOS 13 and 14, and still run GarageBand pretty well. I think uh, I think there'll be a bit of a renaissance. I'm, I'm I'm honestly thinking of buying some like new old stock of them and just store it because for a while there you, uh, you can't get them anymore. But you can get the iPhone sevens and eights um, through corporate deals. So <laughs> businesses don't want to buy the newer stuff. So all the old new old stock that Apple have get bought out by businesses. So uh, yeah, I wanted to just get a few and put them in the freezer. They used to be what you did with tech back in the day. If there was a cool bit of tech that you wanted to make sure you had a new version of, if it, if it ever went away, you would buy multiple of them and stick them in the freezer because apparently that kept them better. Or the fridge. I don't remember. I didn't do it. I'm weird, but I'm not quite that weird. Righty dokie, we're here in the Homewood stretch. Uh, once again, thank you for being here live if you have been here. If you have any final questions or comments, I'm going to leave the chat here open because I can't close it anyway, but please drop a comment in the chat while I give you uh, the, the, the overview again and then I'm going to give you my what I like and what I don't like about this announcement. So let's just go through we'll rehash the update we've got four new phones coming we've got the 12 and the 12 pro they're going to available for pre-order tomorrow and will be a week away if you want the mini version or the pro max version the little tiny 5.6.1 uh, no was it 5.4 inch screen or the big uh, 6.7 inch screen you're gonna to have to wait till november all of them have 5g support we've got new colors that all look good they're all rocking the a14 bionic chip some new camera improvements including night mode on all of them thinner lighter smaller smaller. MagSafe is a thing <laughs> where you can make your phone look ugly with a bunch of accessories. Sorry, that's my opinion. Apple didn't put that in their marketing. Make your phone look as ugly as possible by stacking a bunch of crap on the back. Uh, we've got the HomePod Mini, which I'm actually reasonably excited for. $99, a smart speaker with a bit of the Apple zhuzh attached to it. So that is it. That's what the announcement was. Like I said, evolution, not revolution. And uh, if you want to catch all the details, we did our deep dive on prices, starting from uh, $9.99 for the Pro, from $6.99 for the 12 Mini as well. So what do I like? So I like the fact, I like the fact that we have the A14 Bionic chip, and it's the same chip in every phone. Now, I don't know if that was just a cost thing here from Apple to make sure that they could get these out and manufactured and produced, but it, it is cool because you're not going to get, there's no downgrade depending on which one you get. You're not going to get the good chip, not like the S that we used to have. You got the first one, and then the S model came out that had the better chip. It's all going to have the A14 Bionic, and uh, again, it's probably a play more by Apple to help them out than to help us out, but hey, let's benefit from it. You get the uh, iPhone 12 mini the cheapest one for 700 bucks then uh, you still get the a14 bionic so that's cool uh the 128 gig minimum on the pro models that's a good upgrade like i said i i would recommend getting 128 meg uh, meg <laughs> 128 megabytes yes it's 1994 128 gigabytes at least if you're a creator because you will fill that up really quickly i have 512 gig on my ipad and i have 256 on my iphone i am constantly deleting things on my iphone to make space I am a video creator, so I've got big gigabyte files on there all the time. But even if you're just creating music or you're using it for downloading apps and photos and cameras and whatever, you're going to fill it up fast. So if you have the budget to stretch, I would actually go for, I would go the iPhone 12 with 256 over the 12 Pro with 128. It's, it's that much more important for me to have that storage, but that's just me. Uh, the cameras with the low light mode will help a lot. So I like the fact that we've got better cameras on here uh, and we've got the dual camera on the iPhone 12, the three cameras that look ugly, but I'm sure are highly functional on the iPhone 12 Pro. And uh, we've got uh, the screen size improvements. So yes, it'll give your apps more screen real estate. Yes, we have to deal with the weird and wonderful wacky world of, of Apple's different screen resolutions and 
and sizes that are not 16 by 9. They're this weird, slightly off aspect ratio. Makes my life difficult, but for you, you probably won't care. <laughs> what don't I like? I uh, I really don't like the fact that they are still lightning on the Pro models. Would have loved to see USB-C. It would just make sense to make that their Pro level because if they're, they're going to be bringing out new Macs. By the way, buried the lead, no new Macs. No new Macs, no AirTags. So what I haven't talked about is what hasn't actually been announced. So we haven't heard, we'll probably get another event probably in November or December with the new Macs and maybe even with AirTags, but no sign of either of those things in this one. But the fact that it's not only is it lightning, but the only cable you get in there is a lightning to USB-C. Like, I, I just don't know. Like, right now, I only have one USB-C power brick. Like, I've got the one for my iPad Pro, which came with it. If I bought this, I can't charge it. I have to unplug my iPad Pro to plug in my iPhone 12 or buy another Apple Fast Charge with the USB-C. So, it's very weird that they've pushed us into USB-C. They haven't just given us a state, straight USB cable. And yes, I know, I have, a, I have plenty of lightning to USB cables and it, it'll be fine. But it's just a weird, it's a weird decision to make. Um, so yeah, I think that it's actually designed to make you buy the additional accessories. So all of these are here to make you actually buy the different accessories, uh, with the iPhone 12 and the 12 Pro, because you need to get the MagSafe and then you need to get the quick charger and then the MagSafe charger and the cover and yeah, so on and so forth. Uh, no headphone jacks. <laughs> I buried the lead on that, didn't I? But yes, no headphone jacks. Of course there's not because there never will be. Again, headphone jacks are done. They are history. They are finished. So that is my like and dislike. Like I said, I don't I don't get emotional about this. I know some people get really worked up about how much they love or how much they hate, how good they were, how bad they were. Uh, yeah, I don't think so. Uh, I think it's just, it's a, it's a company. They're putting out products. If you want them, if you like them, buy them. If you don't, don't. <laughs> it really is as simple as that. But yes, there are some improvements. I'm glad that this event happened and I'm glad that the timing is good because in probably late this year or early next year, I will need to upgrade. Again, my 10S is good, but it is uh, it is aging and it does have, uh, yeah, it does have a limited lifespan left and uh, new things are shiny. So there you go. Uh, so yes, I will. Uh, I will be upgrading again, upgrade, updating the uh, the iPhone guide again. If you go over to studiolive.today.com/iphone, you can check out my iPhone guide over there. Let's uh, see if we have got any final questions. Um, Bubba says, "Is that the old lock button they brought back?" Does it? Yeah, yeah. It, it does look like the old. So we've we've still got lock buttons on the side here, the little little switch there. But it does look like the very old version lock button. Let's just go back to go back to the view here. Uh, where are we? Let's see, there's so many different pictures of things that I need to I need to go back to the to the actual iPhone 12 thing. Uh, where are we? iPhone, iPhone 12, and we'll say go look. But yeah, it is. It's the iPhone five. It's the iPhone five design back again. Every all that's old is new again. Uh, there it is. Is they going to show us the other side? Show us the side. Show us the switch. No, they keep showing the. They keep showing the other side with the little volume rocker. There it is. Yeah. So that that's it. It looks just like the uh, the little flick switch on the side of the iPhone. So I'll show you just for comparison. This is the switches that we have. So yeah, this these are the tens. The elevens obviously went a little bit different and went uh, more. Uh, more square and then these are going super sharp and square so the old 10 design here was where they went with these curves and these smoothness bits here you got the little flick switch there which is on the top and does that and then yeah these ones are actually the the ones that are more flush because you don't have this rounded edge you've got uh, this sort of edge then yeah they're gonna they look just like the original iphone 5 switches almost almost iphone 4 even like <laughs> <laughs> They've gone old school. It's uh, it's to align with you know how everything is eighties now. It's all neon and eighties. They've thought, well, our our equivalent of going to the eighties is uh, is to go back to you know the uh, the what the mid twenty tens, <laughs> all the way back to 2013, 2014. Oh yeah yeah. Uh, right today, I don't think we got anything else. 
Um, Gordon Penny says, is the headphone jack a rough deal? Is there much of a lag, a Bluetooth check when recording? Yeah. So that's the main problem, Gordon, is that if you're recording and if you're using an iPhone for music and for audio and for video, Bluetooth is not good because the lag gives you significant sync issues if you're trying to do any sort of recording, overdubbing, aligning audio and video. So Bluetooth is bad for that. So you will need to use, and look, it's not, it's not a big deal. It's just a dongle. So you just need to use one of the lightning to three and a half mil dongles. Um, and then, or just hook it up to a lightning or USB audio interface, which is what uh, what most musicians will do if uh, if they had uh, if they have to record or want to record things. Righty dokey, that is going to do us here. Thank you. I hope you found this uh, fun and enlightening and entertaining. If you did get some value out of this one, hit the like button down below. That just tells me that I should do more of these sort of videos. Uh, hopefully, yeah, you don't now don't have to go off and watch the the, the Apple presentation of all of their all of their hype and all of their uh, fancy words. I just wanted to give you a simple and easy view of all of the different changes and all the different things. So yes, new colors, new prices, new 5G. Get your tinfoil hats ready for the new 5G iPhone 12s, the HomePod mini and the MagSafe accessories so you can stack the back with ugly crap. That's going to be the new motto. <laughs> Studio Live today, where we stack the back with ugly crap. Um, I don't think Apple will go with that. Thanks for being here, folks. Have a wonderful rest of your day. And uh, I will catch you really soon here on the channel. Got a heap more videos coming out this week on some pretty cool topics and recording and garage band and all those good things. So if you're not already subscribed, make sure you do that as well. I will see you on the next one. Be kind to yourself. Be kind to others. Buy Apple products. I suppose. And I'll 